Welcome to Health Professional Radio. Thank you so much for joining us once again. We'll be speaking with Andy DeLeo. He's joining us here as Chief Strategy and Marketing Officer at GE Healthcare U.S. in Canada. He's going to talk about findings from the Reimagining Better Health, GE Healthcare's first ever international study on the state of healthcare. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Andy. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Well, briefly, give us a bit of an insight into your background. Uh, Sure. I've got... uh, Two different sides of my background. The first decade or so, um, I had a clinical background in radiation oncology and physics. Uh, I worked on the cancer side, uh, taking care of cancer patients on a daily basis uh, and quickly moved up through administration. I've had the great fortune of running several grants uh, through the National Cancer Institute, as well as building several comprehensive cancer centers, uh, both in the U.S. and Asia. Uh, In the last 13 years of my career, I've been on the industry side of healthcare, um, being able to work for GE Healthcare and really focus on the innovations that uh, allow us to impact the people in our communities and the the patients that they may become in their life. Reimagining Better Health. This study talks about uh, interoperability, uh, fragmented care. What is GE Healthcare doing to break down silos across the healthcare system? When it comes to breaking down healthcare silos across the system, uh, GE really wants to understand first, you know, what are some of those big barriers? Uh, The first one is really about building trust. So how do we help clinicians um, not only trust, but really understand new innovations such as AI? Um, How do we ensure that patients who maybe aren't necessarily comfortable with new care spaces, whether it's at home or retail spaces, how do we help them sort of understand the importance and the nuance of receiving care closer to home? Um, The second sort of big theme is really around creating these seamless care experiences. So whether you're at home, you go to a retail space, uh, or you're at a hospital or maybe an outpatient center, how do you make sure that that care is the same and it's consistent across all those various care continuums, um, both from a clinician perspective as well as a patient perspective? And the last one is really about focusing on the value and the appreciation that our clinicians and care providers get. Um, we know that you know during COVID and in a post-COVID world, things in regards to mental health, burnout, cognitive burden, are all big things that our clinicians are facing. And so how do we help to continue to innovate to reduce those stressors, which allows them to get back to what they enjoy most, caring for patients in their communities and helping them live better and more healthier lives? That's quite a bit to consider. What are your thoughts on what healthcare is going to look like in the future? When it comes to what I think healthcare is going to look like in the future, um, I think it's really going to be more human and it's going to be more flexible. And the way that we're going to get through there is through digital. Um, Oftentimes people hear me say that I believe the future of healthcare is to be delivered at the N of one, which means we're going to be able to have vast amounts of data, whether it's through you know, maybe your watch and sensors. Um, It could be through your pharmacy and maybe some of the -the over-the-counter medications uh, or prescriptions that you have. It could be imaging studies. It could be uh, just your annual wellness and screening and physicals. And when you start to take all of that multimodal data, those different areas of data, and you start to put them together, that's where the magic happens. You really start to begin to care for not a population of people that are similar to Neil or similar to Andy, but we really start to deliver care that's specific to Neil. It's based on where you work, the air that you breathe, the food that you eat, uh, and what your life experience has been. The same thing for me. And from my perspective and from GE Healthcare's perspective, it's being able to enable all of that vast data 
being able to collect it in a digital world. So you're moving it from data to information to knowledge. But then when you start to apply things like AI to it, that's where that knowledge really starts to move into wisdom, where you start to understand the patient in front of you, what's going on with them, and how do you make sure that they've got the right treatment at the right time to get them back to their normal daily lively activities. You know, even with ongoing research, studies, development, the healthcare industry is is fraught with inefficiencies and administrative uh, burdens, the red tape. How is GE Healthcare helping uh, clinicians to leverage this technology to overcome those burdens? Um, As we start to think about, you know, sort of the decentralization of healthcare, um, and it's starting to move into like home and retail spaces, we really realize that AI has got the potential to increase the productivity and access to quality care by helping make sense of the massive amounts of data and really to create new users and expanding access to to care. So sort of think of this as um, an intelligent assistant and how do we take that intelligent assistant and begin to deploy it into existing workflows? And this is where Artificial intelligence helps to drive that operational and clinical efficiencies. Uh, It can do wonderful things like reduce scan times, help with the administrative tasks, and really increase that diagnostic confidence for our clinicians. I would also say that as we look to that future of care when it's more personal and precise, um, especially when we think of this in more of the therapy planning space, that AI is really going to be essential in helping to better match patients to therapies for that tailored and personalized approach to their care. How do you address the the recent sentiment and studies around AI bias? And uh, how is GE Healthcare planning to address this, I guess, larger distrust in AI? You speak a lot about how AI is going to make uh, healthcare more human. Uh, Sure. In the Reimagining Better Health study, um, we noticed that the recent sentiment uh, around that AI bias bias, uh, really highlights an important issue in the field of artificial intelligence. So we need to make sure that we're addressing that AI bias um, with a holistic approach involving the technical advancements, the ethical considerations, and the regulatory measures. And so when we take these three efforts, we can really work towards developing AI systems that are not only fair, but they're transparent and they're also accountable. And so to that end, at GE Healthcare, we're looking at where the data sets are coming from, who is included in them. And we're evaluating those algorithms that classify and organize the data and looking at the AI formulation itself so that clinicians have the opportunity to give feedback into updating Uh, these algorithms. And give us a website, if you would, where our listeners can learn more about GE Healthcare and Reimagining Better Health. I would encourage your listeners and subscribers to go to gehealthcare.com forward slash insight forward slash reimagining dash better dash health. Andy, I thank you so much for your time this morning here on Health Professional Radio. Looking forward to another conversation. Thank you very much, Neil. I appreciate your time. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Andy DeLeo. Audio copies of this program are available at healthprofessionalradio.com.au, also at Anchor Spotify. And be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.